All right, so now what I want to talk about is how your high poly and low poly need to be named so that they will uh, work together as you would expect in Painter. For instance, we would like the wing high poly to speak only to the wing low poly and not to bake onto the side of the, um, the body, right? So how do you isolate individual high poly geometry or groups of high poly geometry so that they only speak to the exact low poly mesh that they're supposed to talk to. So I've got this up here because I kind of want to just show you some additional functionality that's very useful. I've already named everything correctly and you can see as I'm popping through here it's it's uh, grabbing whatever the appropriate subtool is. I have a lot of subtools here that are part of the high poly and I want to show them all. So what I can do is I can actually right click and do select by name and then just type in asterisk high asterisk and it'll go through and select everything that has high in the name. And then I can just right click on that and go to show hide and choose uh, show selected hide others. So this is a very easy way to go through and toggle your visibility. So the way I have set this up is there is one low poly mesh for the body and various low poly meshes for all the rest of these things. So all of these high poly subtools here are going to speak to a single low poly mesh here in the my file, right? So if I open up the, this thing that's kind of still in the way, it's one of the little weird things about it. It draws over whatever the window is. So anyway, all of that high poly stuff, in fact, it's kind of useful in this one case. I'm gonna slide this back over on top of Maya and run the bar down. So it's, it's body high and this one is called body low. So there are multiple sub tools here in the high poly that need to bake onto this one low poly. So the body low, normally it would just be body high. Like if there was one thing you can see, uh, pipes high, pipes low, right? There's just one high poly for a low poly. And I can show you a kind of a classic example of that. This is from a, uh, another tutorial series called 3D Foundations. You can find that on YouTube if you'd like. And basically there's like one high poly mesh for every low poly. It's just a one-to-one -one ratio. So we don't have to worry about how to set the naming convention up so that it talks to uh, like one low poly will talk to a, a variety of high polys. But this is the, this is all you got to do. It's pretty easy. You just put a number at the end of it and it doesn't really have to be in any order, but it doesn't hurt for it to be in order. It makes it a little bit easier to kind of understand what's going on. And once you've got this, there's a couple more things we need to do. I'm gonna hop back into ZBrush here. So you can see we've got these poly counts. And what I have noticed is if you try to export one FBX with all of your high poly geo, it is definitely possible to do that, but oftentimes you'll run into problems with Painter because it just can't import all that geo and bake it. So what I have done kind of classically is I will just select groups of the high poly and export them out as individual high poly FBXs that I can then uh, bring into Painter. And that seems to work better. And there's one other thing that I need to do, and that is look at the poly counts. And these are all measured in K, which means thousands. If you see an M, that means millions. Like that's gonna be one million polys for leg front O2. One million is not that big of a deal, but it's really, really easy to get super high poly counts, especially when you're doing stuff with live bullion, something like this, for instance. So this one's already been decimated. You can see that it has this like crazy chaotic edge flow to it. It's completely unsculptable. It is, there's no, really nothing that you could do with this. So this is like the final stage, but I'm going to show you the decimation master here in ZBrush because it's a really useful tool for taking something like, for instance, our wing high. And let's say it's a two, two and a half million polygons. If I wanted this to be fewer polygons, which I do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this little paintbrush on so I can see the vert color, which is also an important component. Uh, you want to go to let me get this thing out of the way. I'm going to go to Z script or Z plugin. And then it's called Decimation Master. I'm just going to click this little circle here so it docks. So the way Decimation Master works is the first thing you got to do is with your subtool selected, whatever you want to modify. If it's got vert color, you've got to turn on using key poly paint, otherwise that'll get nuked. And then uh, you want to do a pre-process current. So I'll go ahead and pre-process and you'll see it's doing some updating here. I'm going to pause the video momentarily. All right, so that took one minute and like 12 seconds. So kind of a 
kind of a process there. And this is not a very heavy mesh. So just to give you an idea, this is what, 2.4 2, 2 million polygons. But now that I've got that, we can see there's no change to the geometry yet. But if I come over here, I've got these three ways of decimating. I can either do what is the percent of my current poly count that I want to keep. So if I wanted to keep 25% or 50% or whatever, this is a, a specific poly count. So I could say like 500,000 polygons. You see that little K there? Um, and that's probably pretty safe here. And then there's there's points. And you can see that the, the points in the polys are going to be a little bit different, but uh, not significantly. And once I've got that, I'm going to turn my poly frame off so I can kind of take a look at it. I'm just going to hit decimate current. And it'll go through and do whatever it's going to do. And we can see now we had that lovely 2.5 million poly mesh. Now it's going to be 500K. So you can see, well, it should be anyway. It looks like it's... Uh, 845 so whatever it didn't exactly give me oh you know what i changed my value how about that i don't I remember when i did that but let me try that again but here's one of the cool things about this is you can actually just decimate it to a different value over and over and over again until you get the either the polycon that you're looking for or you begin to see artifacting and this probably wasn't a great example to show you what the artifacting looks like because it's kind of just a flat surface but let me just make this like really low make it like 10,000, and you will begin to see, first of all, there isn't enough polygons to support the, the vert colors, but then also, well, it'll get real faceted. And again, it's, this is probably like the wrong one to, to try to demonstrate them. But if it's like a round thing, you'll see it very, very clearly. It'll just get this sort of chippy look to it. So you wanna, you wanna avoid that. And the nice thing is once you've processed it or pre-processed it, you can do whatever you want here and it'll just update. And it's, it's um, well, let's see, let me go ahead and decimate current. So it's going to go back to the original and then like take it to 500k. So, so long as you don't do anything else to it, it'll be able to do different values very, very quickly. So that's one of the nice things about, about this tool. But you just got to wait for the pre-process step uh, to complete before you can finish. So anyway, what I like to do is just kind of make sure like all of the sub tools that I'm including in my high poly are less than a million polygons, if possible. It's not a requirement and it's also not something that's like written down anywhere. It's just, I noticed my bakes were failing at painter and I tried reducing the poly counts of the high poly and they stopped failing. So it's kind of one of those things that uh, uh, your results may vary. It may not be necessary. You could, you can just export your stuff and maybe your computer is powerful to handle it and who knows. Um, anyway, but it's not, uh, not a bad idea because the other thing is it's not unusual to need to re-export stuff and and let you change your your mind about vert color or, or whatever and the higher poly meshes tend to late just take longer so like the whole process is just faster to export and easier to iterate on and bug, bug fix whatever so i recommend doing it um, you want to make sure that you save off a version of your of your high poly geo that's specifically indicated as decimated you don't want to overwrite the only copy of the high poly that you have because this is destructive like there's no like if I were to close this file and reopen it, like I wouldn't have access to any of this stuff. It's just, that's the geo that I'm stuck with. So, you know, very useful, but uh, there are some, some caveats. Okay, so hopefully that kind of clarifies what the names need to look like and how to get your poly counts uh, kind of figured out. So what I, I'm gonna turn solo off here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you one more thing. So I'm gonna isolate just the body stuff. We'll go ahead and do uh, show selected and hide others. Once that's done, the way that you export this is you go to Z plugin and FBX export import. You want to set this to visible. Like I think the default might be selected in, in which case you'd only export that one subtool. So it needs to be set to visible. We'll just hop over here now. And then um, this stuff, whatever the defaults are, are probably going to be fine. You want to make sure that whatever the FBX is, is probably whatever is current. And then the, the rest of this, like uh, this just means binary versus ASCII. ASCII is readable, like human readable, and it's a bigger file and probably slower to process because it's got to be, my guess is converted to binary. So just leave it at binary and then you just hit export and it'll give you a you know file save location. So once that's done, you want to give it a name. In my case, I gave it the name of whatever, Cicada High 01. And it doesn't really care about what the FBX file name is. It's going to look at these. It's basically going to import the FBX file and then separate it out into its individual components, in which case it starts to do all of its it's matchiness and by it's here I'm talking about substance painter okay and then once that's done you could go through and just basically grab everything else so this would be like a manual select but not that difficult again because I've got this very handy plugin 
And yeah, I don't know, maybe I missed one in there, but I think it's pretty good. All right, we'll go to right click and then go to show hide and show selected hide others. And then once that's done, here's all the other pieces. I would go ahead and make sure that everything looked visible and then same deal, just go, go and export. And I exported this stuff as uh, cicada high underscore O2. And then in Painter, it's as simple as importing those files into the Bake Mesh Maps menu. And we'll take a look at some of the Painter stuff here in the next video.